Hi everyone, my name is Andrew. I'm the lead pastor here at The Crossing Church in Costa Mesa. And I wanna take a second and just thank you for jumping in with us this weekend. You know, if you're brand new or maybe you've been around online for the last few weeks and you're looking to get a little bit more connected or maybe you got a few questions that you would like answered, one of the best next steps you can take right now is to simply write hi in the comments on YouTube or Facebook or you can even send me an email at andrew at thecrossing.com and I would love to personally respond and just see if there's anything I can do or our church could do to serve you moving forward in this season that we're all in together. Now today we have a great message from our student pastor, Josh Carmen. He's going to be talking about faith and doubt. And one of the things I love is regardless how you grew up, you know, if you went to church growing up or maybe you're brand new because of an invitation to faith and you're just starting to ask some questions about God or Jesus, one of the things I love is this message and this time together, we're going to be talking about some of those doubts that every single one of us have in life. And in fact, to kick off our service today, we're actually going to be watching a video of just how everyday people answer really important questions we all have to wrestle with in life. Questions like, who is God? Who is Jesus? What role does faith play in our life? So I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're with us this weekend. Enjoy the rest of the service. Who is Jesus? Mm. Um, uh, um, uh, I think... Uh, uh, I believe he was a person. Um, he's the son of God. I don't believe Jesus ever really existed. The son of God. If I have to answer that question, I would say God. Uh, he plays on the wing for Chelsea. If you read the Bible, I, I don't think I believe in all of that. Everything. <laughs> He can be any, but for me, he's everything. Who is Jesus? To be honest with you, I don't know. I'm not super religious or anything, so, I mean, he, I guess he's a savior or something. <laughs> Personally, I think that Jesus was probably a really cool dude who lived a long time ago and gave great advice to people, and it snowballed from there. What is faith to me? Um, faith. Faith, I think, is a combination of confidence and peace. Yeah, faith. Um, sorry, not yet. <laughs> These are really good questions. Trust. Um, I'm that confirmed, is. if that helps. I am CNE Anglican, which means I go to church for my grand on Christmas and Easter. Believing without seeing. He also has faith in me that their next step after this interview will it's be food. Yeah. I don't think faith has to do with religion. I don't, know, I don't know how to describe faith. It is believing in something that even though you, you haven't seen it yourself, something that gets you through the day. I hope you're doing well. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Josh Carmen, and I'm the student pastor here at The Crossing. Uh, you know, it's no secret that this has been an incredibly difficult season for everyone. We've been navigating what feels like an ever-growing list of challenges, uh, and that's why we've been going through this series, Lemons to Lemonade, as a church. You see, our desire is to partner with God to make lemonade out of all of the lemons that life has thrown at us. So today, we're talking about the lemon of doubt. This has been a difficult season. And if you found yourself struggling with doubt in your faith, uh, would you just simply write me in the comments? Because I want you to do this so that you can see that you're not alone. This is something that happens to all of us, myself included. You know, as a student pastor, one of the conversations I have frequently with both students and adults is the notion that somehow doubt and faith are opposites. 
as if these two opposites can't exist together. People will pull me aside and tell me that they are nervous and frustrated because they are doing their best to have faith in God, but they can't really seem to shake off the cobwebs of doubt that are kind of taking space in the corners of their mind. Now, I'm here to let you know today that not only are doubt and faith not mutually exclusive terms, but actually, biblically speaking, they often inform one another. And if handled correctly, doubt can become one of the greatest tools in our toolbox for growing in our faith and experiencing Jesus in his life-changing ways. Now, before I jump into the message today, I want to point out that much of the inspiration for today's message came from a book called The God Who Trusts, written by Curtis Holton. It's an encouraging read that has helped me immensely as I've grown in my understanding of this expansive view of the word faith. Now, the question that we have to ask ourselves when we're walking through seasons of doubt is simply, what is faith? What is it? You see, because while we often have a tendency to define faith as right belief, Today, we're going to look at a few more dimensions to this word that will help us better round out its definition. Not only will it round it out, but it'll also encourage us as we walk through difficult seasons like the one that we are currently in. So we're going to start our time together today by looking at Hebrews 11.1. It says this, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You see, in this verse, we catch a beautiful, well-rounded understanding of this word, faith. It's confidence, it's hope, it's assurance. We have confidence. We believe that God is working things together for the good of those who love him, like Romans 8, 28 tells us. You can have hope. We have hope that God is not leaving us to deal with the difficulties of the coronavirus season on our own, like Hebrews 13, 5 reminds us. And you can trust, we trust that God is over, or that God is our ever-present help in times of trouble, like the psalmist writes in Psalm 46.1. Now, it's important that we unpack each of these terms to better understand them and to know that faith is simply not right belief. You see, faith isn't simply not having doubt. Faith isn't simply not asking questions. Faith isn't not struggling. Faith isn't even not wrestling with God. In fact, faith, true, proper faith requires all of the above. So we're going to jump in a little bit more now. And so we'll start with the easiest one uh, to tackle, and that's belief. In other words, one aspect of faith is when we are able to say to ourselves and others that despite necessarily not seeing God, we can acknowledge God's existence. Jesus speaks of faith in this way at the end of the Gospel of John. He says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Notice then that it's not that faith makes us believe. In fact, it's the other way around. Belief is one part of our faith, but it's not the whole of it. Now, there's an analogy I like to use when explaining Christian faith. Imagine that there's a man and a woman standing on two opposite sides of a great chasm. Okay, you have John and you have Sally. And there's a rope that extends all the way from one side of the chasm to the other. Now, John is going to get on a bicycle and pedal to the other side to meet Sally. And he's going to pedal across this rope and... On the other side, Sally is saying to herself, there's no way that John's going to make it across. I just don't believe it. But John keeps going and pedaling and pedaling and pedaling, etc. He gets to the halfway point. You can see Sally's demeanor start to change a little bit. And then he gets to the three quarter point. She begins to think to herself, oh, wow, he's actually going to do this. And by some miracle, he shows up on the other side of that chasm. And she actually believes that he did it because she saw it, right? So John says to Sally, do you believe that I can cross back to the other side on my bicycle? And of course for Sally, the answer is, well, yeah, now I believe. I just saw you do it with my own eyes. But John says to Sally, okay, well, show me your faith and get on the back of the bike. Now, do you see the difference there? Belief is certainly part of our faith, but there's something more to faith than just belief, isn't there? Faith is more than that just belief idea. It's also trust. You can believe that John will get on the, Uh, will successfully cross to the other side on his bike, but you're sure as heck not going to get on that. No rational person would, right? And you can believe in God and you can believe many things about God and even with a lot of conviction, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that you're going to trust him. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says these words. He says, do not worry about your life, about what you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food? and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap 
or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? So the question becomes, what is Jesus challenging here? Jesus isn't necessarily challenging your belief per se. What he's really challenging is your trust in God. You may believe that God exists and that God created the universe, but do you trust your life to him? Will you trust that God will take care of you and that his promises will come true for you? You see, trust is the willingness to risk. Christian faith risks. Marriage is actually a great example of trust. So you see, when you marry someone, you are risking your entire life to that person. You risk that they will honor you, love you, and treat you with respect. You risk that they won't abuse you or act hateful towards you or be unfaithful to you. And Christian faith involves trust and risk. You see, we give our lives over to God in faith, trusting that he will do well by us. It's not enough to simply believe that God has power. We must also trust that God is gonna use that power for good, that God will fulfill God's promises to love us eternally. Furthermore, trust is personal. If our trust is in the person of God, that's great. But, and we want to trust also that, but not simply just the power of God either. Our trust has to be in who God is more than what God can do. You see, you trust the love and the goodness of God. As Christians, we have entrusted our very being to the love of God. Christians have committed themselves to trusting God's examples of love, forgiveness, and mercy, even when the seduction to trust the worldly authorities of status, money, or political powers are tempting. You see, trusting God is what we choose to do, even when it may be difficult to believe. But not even trust is the whole of Christian faith. We can believe in God and we can trust in God, but do we hope? You see, returning to the analogy of marriage, it is possible to be married to a wife or a husband. You can believe in your spouse and you can even trust your spouse. But what if you have no hope for your spouse? What if you don't hope that your spouse will achieve her life aspirations? or you don't hope that you'll ever grow closer to him, or you don't hope for your spouse's good. Your marriage has belief, it has trust, but what if it has no hope? Would you even consider that faithful? Probably not, right? So there must be another side of Christian faith. Faith is also hope. You see, to hope is to wait with a sense of positive expectation. We hope that God's love, power, and wisdom will one day make right all of the evils in this world and every pain that you and I have gone through. If we believe in God and trust God to save us through the work of Christ, then we certainly have hope to one day enjoy God's heaven. You see, in other words, hope is a part of faith that looks positively to the future. And hope is also this two-way emotion. When you and I hope, we hope both for each other and for ourselves. And when we hope in God, we hope for God's good to be true on earth as it is in heaven. And we hope for each other's good. We hope for each other's eternal good as well as our own. But we can't even say that hope is the pinnacle of this Christian faith. Because what if we have hope, but our hope has no love attached to it? Then our hope honestly just becomes perverse. Like when hoping someone gets their just desserts. That doesn't really sound like Christian faith. Christian faith doesn't hope for ill. It hopes for what's good. So finally, the fourth part of this definition is that Christian faith is love. So, so far we have Christian faith is belief, it's trust, it's hope, and it's love. And love is is expressed in devotion and commitment. You see, Christian faith is devotion and commitment to God, to God's mission, and to each other. And this is why the New Testament is able to actually speak of faith as a verb, right? As something we do or put into action because we put our faith into motion when we act in love towards the other, when we accept each other, when you look out for my needs and I look out for your needs, when we take care of one another, we are expressing the aspect of faith that is love. So there it is. Christian faith is belief, trust, hope, and love. All right? It's belief, trust, hope, and love. And with that definition, then we can further define one more thing. What is doubt? You see, I've said it earlier that doubt is not the opposite of Christian faith. Rather, doubt is just simply a sign that one's faith is struggling. And now I can fully explain what that means. So I hope that you'll agree with me that a healthy Christian faith is the combination of belief, trust, hope, and love. But what if a Christian struggles with one or more of these four? What if you're having a difficult time in your life? 
What if you believe in God and you hope for all good things and you're committed to love, but you struggle with trusting in God? Does that mean that you don't have faith because you don't have all four aspects nailed down perfectly? No, it just means that your faith is struggling in one aspect and the absence of that thing is what we understand as doubt. You see, you still have your faith, but your faith doesn't feel complete and that's fine. But I want to affirm to you in no uncertain terms that even if you struggle with one or more aspects of faith, you still absolutely have faith. Faith is still faith even when one is finding it hard to believe. If you struggle to believe, but you have hope and commitment, that's faith, even though it's struggling faith. Because belief is not the whole of faith. Faith is still faith when one fails to trust God in the midst of suffering. You can still believe that God is who God says he is, and you can still hope that God is going to do everything that God says he's going to do, but you just have a hard time trusting that God is living those things out. And that's fine. That's fair because faith is still faith because trust is not the whole of faith. You can have faith even when your hope feels uprooted and withered, like I know for many of us it does in this season. Because you believe and you commit, but that hope feels empty. That's still faith. It's struggling faith. Because remember, hope in and of itself is not the whole of faith. You trust and you can hope but sometimes it can be hard to have right belief in the face of that trial, that committed love to God, maybe might be the thing that you're struggling with. It might be too much to ask for you in this season. Well, it's still faith. Again, although it's a struggling faith because love in and of itself is not all of faith. See, here's the key. The key is to focus on the aspects of faith that you do have and try and heal and mend from there. Now, given time to heal, the faith that you do have can grow into the faith uh, that incorporates those other aspects more positively. But whatever you do, do not let doubt convince you that you have no faith. You do have faith. Whether it is belief, trust, hope, or love, you have faith. Now, finally, I want you to consider one other aspect. There's one other person who has faith. God has faith. And by that, we mean that God believes, he trusts, He hopes and he loves. You see, God believes, for example, that creation is good and that all things can be redeemed. And he acts on that belief. And God trusts. He trusts you and me with his mission to take care of his children and to grow in the likeness of Christ, to love one another, to love our neighbor as ourselves. And God risks. And sometimes God's risk through his trust results in pain for God anytime we break his trust. And God hopes, God hopes for the best outcome for all people. He hopes in you, he hopes in me that we we will fulfill our promises to him. And that the promise that matters most is love of God and love of neighbor. And God loves, God is committed and devoted to you. God rejoices in your life and your salvation and your maturing faith. God acts on your behalf caring for you and paying, being patient with you when your faith is struggling. And finally, one day when God takes you home to be with him. So remember, faith is belief, faith is trust, faith is hope, and faith is love. No matter where you find yourself on your journey, I want you to know that God is walking with you. But more than that, God knows the feelings that you're experiencing. He knows the pain that you carry the doubt that you struggle with, the feeling like you don't know that you can hope or trust anymore. He sees your weariness and he senses your exhaustion and he wants to soothe your soul because the God that we serve is mightier than all of the things. He's bigger and stronger and in control of where all of this is going. Now in a moment, I'm gonna pray and I wanna invite you to say yes to Jesus for the first time and turn it over to him. If you're someone that needs to trust God with your life, I promise you that God will meet you even via a screen as I'm talking to you now, God hears you. And when you find yourself in a season of struggle, the best way to respond in that struggle is by leaning in. You see, when in this season you come across those doubts and those aspects of faith in your life, the thing that I really want you to consider asking yourself might sound a little backwards, but the antidote often to doubt is the simple question, Who can I serve? Who can I serve? You see, remember, the faith that incorporates these four elements is best described as an action. You're called to make a difference in this life. 
the scriptures tell us that we were created to do good works. Now, Gandhi has a quote that I think sums this up quite well. Gandhi says, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Because if you're looking for ways to see God move in your life, if you're looking to grow in your belief in God, to gain better understandings and depth in your trust in God, or to hope more in God or expand your love for God, you do so by making a difference. And this is what I love about this church and the people that are in it because God has been using the crossing in mighty ways every day of 2020 in this season to make an incredible impact in the lives of people around us. You can find out all about it on our app or on our website, thecrossing.com. But what I want to encourage you to do is to not let another day go by without considering how you can get involved and continue to make a difference. You see, God is on the move and he's inviting you to join him. Recently, last week, uh, Pastor Andrew talked about the difference that we're making with one of our partner schools, Pomona Elementary. We have already raised over 400 headsets because of you and your faithful generosity. These headsets cost $25 a piece and over 400 of them have been bought because people have stepped up and decided to make a difference. People have stepped forward, even in the seasons of doubt. I know because I've talked to you. I've talked to people who have said, I don't know where my money's gonna go, where it's gonna come from. We're struggling but this is too important of a thing to pass up. I want to get involved. And immediately you will begin to see a difference being made in your life when you trust God like that. You see, because the reality is this, we are all going to walk through difficult times. We're all going to walk through tough seasons and we're all going to struggle. You will struggle with one or more of these areas of faith and that's okay. But the whole idea is to utilize doubt as a vehicle to grow deeper in your walk with Jesus, to not let it paralyze you from stepping forward and making a difference in this world. We were created to do good works. You have an opportunity to step in and do that. And I want to encourage you and I want you to know that God will meet you in that gap. If you don't feel like there's anything that can hold you if you step forward, God will meet you there. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you that faith is so much more than just simply right belief. We thank you that it's hopeful. We thank you that faith involves trust. And we thank you that it involves love. And we thank you that you exemplify all of these aspects for us in the person of Jesus. We thank you that we have someone that we can look to to learn from and to grow more like. Father, I pray for each person that's watching this message right now, the person that's struggling with faith, the person that's struggling with doubt. Jesus, I ask that you would meet them where they are and that you would move them closer to you, that they would experience your faith in them, your hope for them, your love of them, and your belief in them in new and exciting ways that they've never experienced before. Jesus, continue to use the crossing as a place to step forward and make a difference in our community. God, we thank you for the people who have so faithfully served, who have stepped into our community, who have said they want to make a difference. God, I pray that more of us would step forward today. I pray that more of us would acknowledge that we have an opportunity to make a difference and we wanna do so, so other people can experience your love in your life-changing ways. Lord, I wanna ask for the people who have said yes to you for the first time today, that they would know that you love them that they would be able to trust you and that you would meet them there. And God, for people who have already said yes to you, but need to take that next step into baptism, Lord, I ask that you would put it on their heart, that they would know that you will meet them there and that you will continue to grow them. And Lord, for the people that want to step forward and make a difference in this church, Father, would you raise them up? Would you let the crossing be known in our community as a place that genuinely cares about the people around us and doesn't just say it, with empty and hollow words. Jesus, let our faith be action, even when we're struggling with one or more aspects of it. We love you, Lord. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Hey, if you're somebody who said yes to any of these three things today, would you send us an email to info at thecrossing.com or let us know in the comments. If you said yes to Jesus or yes to baptism or you wanna make a difference, we would love to follow up with you. So we're gonna close our time together with a song entitled Raise a Hallelujah. And here's what I want you to consider over the next few moments. Ask yourself the question, where is it that God wants you 
to make a difference in this season. You see, you have something unique to contribute to the world. Now, if you need to simply sit and contemplate the lyrics of the song, that's great. If it's time for you to sing out and rejoice in God, that's amazing too. But if you're someone who is struggling in this season with doubts in one or more of these aspects that we talked about, I wanna challenge you to consider what it would look like to get involved, to make a difference. I promise it'll be one of the best steps you make in your life's journey. Let's worship together.
Let's pray together. God, we come before you and we just say thank you. Thank you because you are a good and gracious God. And in the midst of doubt, you speak and move in our lives. And so, God, we turn our hearts to you and we just say thank you. Thank you for loving us with an everlasting love. Thank you for moving in our lives. God, we love you. We pray this in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Now, before you go, I have a couple of quick updates I just want to share with you. And the first is, is if today you said yes to Jesus for the very first time, I want to say congratulations. I want you to know how grateful we are that God is moving and doing some incredible things in your life. And second, we would love to celebrate this with you and partner with you as you take this next step in your journey. So the best next step you can take if you said yes to Jesus for the very first time is simply send me an email at andrew at thecrossing.com and then I can follow up with you, encourage you, and just send you some great next steps that I would love for you to be part of. Now, on top of that, this upcoming Thursday night, we're going to have a Zoom prayer gathering. And we do this about once a month as a church. And this is a great way for us to come together to pray and to ask God to move in our lives. And so what you'll see in the comments on both Facebook and YouTube is you'll see some of the great ways to register for that and get, be part of that. But I would definitely encourage you, be part of this prayer gathering. Spend one hour on Thursday night just dedicated to asking God to move in our community, our world, and in our lives. And I promise you, you won't regret it. Now this Sunday, we have an event I am so excited about. If you have kids like I do, you know school is right around the corner. And this school year is going to be an interesting and in some ways very challenging year. And so here at The Crossing, we wanna set the tone for a great kickoff to the fall school year. And so one of the things we're doing Sunday from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. is we're gonna have what we call Water Day here at The Crossing. And this is gonna be a fun event for kids of all ages. We're gonna have water balloon toss. We're gonna to have a dunk tank. We're gonna have a ton of water games for kids of all ages. And we would love to see you there. So here's what I need to ask of you. In order for us to keep this as a safe event for every single person, I just need to know that one, you're coming, and two, what time you're gonna be here. So if you send an email to tjohnson at thecrossing.com and we'll follow up with you with some more details, but I would love to see you there and I promise you, your kids will have a blast. Now on August 30th, we are gonna celebrate baptism. And I'll tell you what, this is one of my favorite weekends of the month where we get to gather together and we get to celebrate people going public with their faith. And so if you're interested in getting baptized, all you need to do is send an email to info at thecrossing.com and we will follow up with you for some next steps around baptism. But I would love to see you at our next baptism service. Now, one last thing I want to celebrate with you today. You heard Josh mention it in the message that we have over 400 headphones already purchased for Pomona Elementary. You know, as those kids head back to school, one of their greatest needs is to create some space where they can focus on learning as they're doing online school this year. And so for you and me, we can help partner together with them in this. Here's two ways you can do that. First is you can give of your resources. Each pair of headphones costs about $25. You can do that through the app or you can do that online at thecrossing.com forward slash give. Now on top of that, one of the things we want to put with these headphones is we want to encourage every single student as they start the new year. In fact, you're gonna see a couple photos right here of some of the people at The Crossing who have already written some encouraging notes for students. So what I'd love to ask of you is if you would also write an encouraging note, just cheering these kids on as they start this upcoming school year. And you can drop those off at The Crossing this week, Monday through Wednesday between 10 and 3 p.m. We would love for you to cheer on these kids in our community in this upcoming season. And then for the rest of us, one of the things I want you to know is I am so grateful for each and every one of you because you give sacrificially to the crossing and you enable us to do things like provide headphones, like provide help for our community and make a difference here at the crossing. And so for all of you who give sacrificially of your resources, I want to thank you. And for those of you who are jumping in for the very first time at thecrossing.com forward slash give or through our app, I want to say thank you as well for being part of all that God is doing here. Thank you guys so much for being part of our service this weekend. I am so glad for each and every one of you. Enjoy the rest of your week.